<clears throat> so we meet again. Hey, you guys, who's my first person to say hi to me? It's Ian and Erica. Hi, you guys. How you doing? <laughs> Coralies are here. I'll say hello to uh, Ava and Chase. And uh, oh, by the way, we'll get started in uh, the usual five minutes at 2 p.m. East Coast time. OK, but in the meantime, I'll say hi to Cassidy and uh, and Ethan and Ke and uh, Jensen and Kinsey and Lucy uh, and Zoe and Alana, uh, Daniel and Waldwick and Ben and June and Trick is here again. Ethan and Hayden, Grant, Braden, Parker, Ella, Blake and Easton in Indiana, Luke and Evan in Georgia. Hi, you guys. Thanks for coming. I'll say hi to Evan and Aaron in Scotch Plains and uh, Jones, Quinn, and Silas, and Liam, and Shelby, and Spencer, and Gianluca, and Matteo are back. Clara and Annabelle, uh, the Phillips kids in Alabama, eating their popcorn. Molly's here. Oh, I better close that window. Hang on a second. I'm going to close the window so I don't hear the noise. Okay, I'm back. Um, oh, um. Amelia's here, the Tuttles, the Maslowski kids, Bennett, Lauren, Emily, Madeline, Jonah, uh, Jesse, uh, Julie, and Josh. Hi, you guys. Thanks for coming. Zachary and Shannon, CJ, Alex, Jake, Las Vegas, and, and uh, Milan, Milan, I hope, and Me Me Meranusia. I hope I pronounced that right. Margo and Camilla, and Ikem and Peg, and... Uh, um, Henry from Kentucky. Hi. <clears throat> Jacob and Amelia and the champs and uh, the Searles, Searles, Molly and Tommaso are here and Nora and Eloise and Kimber, um, Logan and his family and Scotty in Lexington, Kentucky. The Hopper family are here. Thank you for coming. To Jude in Niagara Falls, Marissa, Jake in New Jersey, Kayla, New York, William, Abby, and Isabel. Reese in North Carolina. We got uh, three minutes left, uh, three minutes to go. We'll get started in three at uh, two o'clock. Peter and Ben, Solomon and Zachary, Dylan and Milo, Bryn, Pittsburgh, Theo, Misha and Kabir, Logan and Hudson and Isla are here, and Stacy and Hudson Cooper, Bo from Virginia, Bailey Rafferty from Dublin, California. Tyler, Long Island, and Joshua is here. And excuse me, me, I burped. Uh, Andrew, Ryan, Lucas, Owen from Minnesota, the Hayes family in D.C., the Hugo Boys in Wisconsin. We've got two minutes to go. Blake is here in Virginia. Gavin and Chase in Newtown. Claire and Luke and Emily and Tessa and uh, Afia, Jenna, Easton, and Easton, I should say. Uh, Mallory and Magnolia, Luke and Mia and Lainey and Declan and Mattingly and Brady, Reagan, Evan, Lucas, Ella, Caitlin, Nicole, um, uh, Tara. <laughs> so many of you, th thank you for coming. I wish I could say hello to all of you. Shania, uh, Dylan, uh, uh, Riyadh, and uh, Lena, uh, and uh, Lita, and Amelia, and Kevin in Los Angeles. Daniel is here, and Carter, uh, Quinn, and Ethan. And uh, somebody's here in their car with a dog, Gabe and Penelope. Um, it's, we got one minute to go or less than one minute. Hi, Patrick, Allie, <clears throat> uh, the Andersons. Hi to all of you. I better take a sip of water and stop looking at your names. Sorry about that. For all of you who are logging in now, there's no point in, in, in saying hi because I can't look at your names. Ah, but... We'll get started in less than a minute, as soon as the clock ticks over to 2 o'clock East Coast time. Okay, I'm ready. You guys ready? Let's do this thing. <clears throat> okay. This is always the awkward time <laughs> when I'm looking at the clock and not doing anything. It's go time, baby. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming back, everyone. My name is Dan Gutman. I am the author of the My Weird School series and lots of other books for kids, too. 
I wanted to tell you, in case you didn't know, that today is National Teachers Day. So after we finish up here today, I hope you will send a message, email, a text or something to your teacher. Tell them how much you appreciate the work they do every day, um, not just today. And, you know, it's tough. Being a teacher is tough. And uh, being a teacher remotely is even harder. So tell your teacher you really appreciate him or her today and every day. Okay, let's get started. Oh, we got to do our question of the day, which is today from Daniel. Everybody named Daniel has to be cool. Uh, in East Brunswick, New Jersey, Daniel asked, when you write, do you need absolute so uh, quiet or do you get more ideas with background noise or music? A good question, Daniel. Um, everybody's different. You know, some authors uh, listen to music while they write. I personally uh, mostly do not. I, I write in silence. That's how I focus my attention. Uh, sometimes I'll put on classical music or something that has no lyrics at all. But otherwise, <clears throat> I need really silence in order to focus. Uh, so that's the answer, the answer to the question. And for now, let's focus on our book of the week, which is titled, <clears throat> Miss Tracy is Spacey. Uh, when we started yesterday, we learned that um, Miss, <clears throat> Miss Universe is coming to elementary school. And all the dads got all excited because Miss Universe is coming. Turns out that Miss Universe uh, was coming to the school to teach the kids about astronomy. So all the dads left. And Mr. Cooper was really angry because he wants to teach his math lesson, you know? Um, so he's pretty angry. And so um, uh, Miss Tracy teaches uh, teaches the kids about astronomy and she gets Andrea in the middle of the class and she has Emily. Um, Andrea is the sun and Emily is the earth. And she has Emily uh, revolve around Andrea to show how the planets revolve around the sun. And then she has Emily also spinning around to show how we go from day to night as the earth turns around. And Emily, of course, <laughs> falls down, gets sick and throws up on the floor. That's how the chapter ended with a picture of Emily throwing up on the floor, which you don't see in every children's book. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna start on the next chapter, which is chapter three which is titled, Throwing Up and Throwing Down. You guys ready? Gather around your laptop, your tablet, your big screen TV, your smartphone, whatever it is you're watching. And let's get started with chapter three of Miss Tracy is Spacey. <clears throat> Mr. Cooper rushed over to the intercom and called the front office. One of my students just threw up, he shouted into the phone. A few seconds later, there was a weird noise outside our classroom door. It sounded like a lawnmower was coming down the hallway, but it wasn't a lawnmower. It was Miss Lazar, our school custodian. She was riding her motorized scooter. Miss Lazar wearing her big blue overalls with the letters SC on the front. And here's Jim's picture of Miss Lazar on her scooter and a toilet bowl plunger in her hand. <clears throat> Have no fear, it's I, super custodian, said Miss Lazar as she hopped off the scooter. What happened? Emily got sick, Ryan said, pointing at Emily on the floor. This looks like a job for a super custodian, said Miss Lazar. Anytime finger paint is spilled or somebody loses their retainer in the garbage can or a child throws up, super custodian will be at your service to can you just clean up the mess, please? Asked Mr. Cooper. You can count on me, Miss Lazar said. She, oh, wait a minute, sorry. She put on a pair of big yellow plastic gloves. I'll have this cleaned up in a jiffy. You're going to put Emily's barf into a jar of peanut butter? I should have written at this point. I'm sorry I made a mess, Emily said. No worries, said Miss Lazar. I love messes. If kids didn't make messes, I wouldn't have a job. So make all the messes you want. In fact, I wish you kids would throw up more often. I don't have enough work to do. Miss Lazar is bizarre. Suddenly, Mrs. Cooney, our school nurse, came running in. I got a book for every, everybody. 
Emily, are you okay? Asked Mrs. Cooney as she put a cold rag on Emily's forehead. I think so, said Emily. While Mrs. Cooney was taking care of Emily and Miss Lazar was cleaning up the mess, Miss Tracy got all excited. This is what I call a teachable moment, she said. Emily didn't really throw up, did she? No, she threw down. What? You just demonstrated the law of gravity, Emily, Miss Tracy told her. Did any of your kids ever hear of Sir Isaac Newton? Is he the guy who invented Fig Newtons, I asked? Not exactly, replied Miss Tracy. Isaac Newton is one of the most famous scientists in history. He discovered gravity. Who can tell us what gravity is? Smarty Pants Andrea had already looked it up on her smartphone. She read off her screen. Gravity is the force of attraction by which objects tend to fall towards the center of the earth. Huh, we all said, which is also huh backward. Let me explain it in another way, said Miss Tracy. I'm going to tell you a little story. It was the year 1666. Isaac Newton was 23 years old, and he was sitting under a tree in his mother's garden in England. Suddenly, an apple fell off the tree and hit him in the head. Here's Jim's picture of Sir Isaac Newton sitting under an apple tree and the apple bouncing off his head. That was a weird story. Newton noticed that the apple fell straight down. Miss Tracy continued, it didn't fall sideways. It didn't fall up. So he came to the conclusion that all objects are drawn towards the Earth's center by a force called gravity. Gravity is what makes things fall down. What? That made no sense at all. Where else is an apple going to fall but down? Somebody had to discover that stuff, that stuff falls down instead of up. That's a discovery. Everybody knows stuff falls down. I could have told Miss Tracy that, and I'm just in third grade. That Fig Newton guy was weird, and Miss Tracy is spacey. Let's try an experiment, said Miss Tracy. As she picked up a coffee mug from Mr. Cooper's desk and held it up in the air. What do you think will happen if I let go of this coffee mug? It will fall down, shouted Michael. Let's do the experiment and find out, said Miss Tracy. Wait, don't, shouted Mr. Coop. It was too late. Miss Tracy let go of the coffee mug. It fell down and broke into a million hundred pieces on the floor. Here's Jim's picture of Miss Tracy dropping the <laughs> Mr. Coop's coffee mug on the floor. <laughs> Oh, snap, yelled Ryan. See, said Miss Tracy, that's gravity at work. You broke my lucky coffee mug, shouted Mr. Cooper. Don't worry, said Miss Lazar. I'm sorry, wrong character. <laughs> Don't worry, said Miss Lazar. I'll clean that mess up as soon as I finish with this mess. I love cleaning up messes. Just as gravity made Emily fall down and throw down, it's also the force that holds our solar system together, said Miss Tracy. The sun's gravity holds the Earth in its orbit. The Earth's gravity holds the moon in its orbit. That gravity stuff was pretty cool. But I wasn't thinking about gravity at that moment. I was thinking about Mr. Cooper. He looked mad. All right, that's chapter three. You guys ready for chapter four? Okay, let's do it. Chapter four is titled... Grown-ups behaving badly. <laughs> All right. Mr. Cooper is a pretty easygoing guy, but he wasn't happy when Miss Tracy prevented him from doing his math lesson. And after Miss Tracy broke his lucky coffee mug, he looked really angry. If he had been in a cartoon, smoke would have been pouring out of his ears. Well, I must be going, said Miss Tracy. I've got to go talk to the other classes about astronomy. Wait, 
said Mr. Cooper. Before you go, can I ask you a question about gravity? Of course, said Miss Tracy. Let's say the sun's gravity pulled the planet closer, said Mr. Cooper. What would happen? It would get very hot on that planet, Miss Tracy replied. It might even burn up. Do you mean like this, asked Mr. Cooper. And with that, he took a little lighter out of his pocket. Then he grabbed Miss Tracy's hat with all the balls hanging from it. Then he flicked his lighter and a little flame appeared. No, don't, shouted Miss Tracy. That's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. Mr. Cooper held the lighter under one of the ping pong balls. And here's Mr. Cooper setting Miss Tracy's hat on fire. <laughs> <clears throat> the ping pong ball ignited and then the whole hat went up in flames. Oh, snap, said Ryan. Mr. Cooper set Miss Tracy's hat on fire. Mr. Cooper threw the hat on the floor and stomped all over it to put the fire out. Miss Tracy's hat was totally ruined. It was hilarious. And we got to see it with our own eyes. Well, it would be pretty hard to see it with somebody else's eyes. Now it was Miss Tracy who was all upset. That was my favorite hat, she yelled. I can't believe you set it on fire. You broke my coin mug, Mr. Cooper shouted back at her. I was trying to teach the children about gravity, yelled Miss Tracy. It was just a mug. It was my lucky mug, shouted Mr. Cooper. Oh, stop being a baby. You're the baby. No, you are. No, you are. Went back and forth like that for a while. Then Miss Tracy stormed out of the room. But a second later, she came marching back. She looked really angry. I forgot to tell you kids about meteors, she said as she picked up an eraser from the whiteboard. A meteor is a piece of rock that falls from outer space into the Earth's atmosphere. It can cause a lot of damage. Pretend that Mr. Cooper is the Earth, and this eraser is a meteor. And you'll never believe what she did next. She reared back and threw the eraser at Mr. Cooper. It looked like it was going to hit him on the head. He ducked. The eraser hit a plant on the windowsill and knocked it over. And here's Jim's picture of Miss Tracy chucking an eraser at Mr. Cooper's head. <laughs> Oh, snap, said Ryan. Miss Tracy threw an eraser at Mr. Cooper. I can't believe you did that, shouted Mr. Cooper. You set my hat on fire. You broke my lucky mug. Wow, it was amazing. They were yelling at each other like a couple of bratty kids. I hadn't seen grown-ups act so immaturely since last week when my mother asked my father to take out the garbage. I don't like to see all this violence said Andrea. I believe it sets a bad example for children. What do you have against violins? I asked Andrea. Not violins, Arlo. Violets. It didn't matter if Andrea liked violins or not, because after that, things got even weirder. Mr. Cooper was really mad. He grabbed Miss Tracy. They started wrestling with each other. Mr. Cooper picked up Miss Tracy. He held her over his head. Then he started spinning around. If a planet spins too fast, he yelled, the centrifugal force could make it fly out of orbit. Oh, snap, said Ryan. I think Mr. Cooper is going to throw Miss Tracy out the window. I bet he would have, too. But you'll never believe who walked into the door at that moment. Nobody. It would hurt if you walked into a door. I thought we went over that in chapter one. But you'll never believe who walked into the doorway. It was Mr. Klutz. And here's a picture of Mr. Klutz walking into the room while Mr. Cooper is holding Miss Tracy over his head and spinning around in circles. It's crazy. Where are I? am I?
Oh, okay. I just want to see how everybody was making out, he said. Whoa, what's going on in here? Mr. Cooper put Miss Tracy down. Nobody's making out, said Michael. The teachers were fighting. We weren't fighting, said Mr. Cooper. That's right, said Miss Tracy. Mr. Cooper and I were just teaching the students about astronomy. Sure looked like a fight to me. What's that burning smell, asked Mr. Klutz. Mr. Cooper said Miss Tracy's hat on fire, said Andrea. She started it, shouted Mr. Cooper. I did not, yelled Miss Tracy. It looked like they were going to start fighting again, but Mr. Klutz stepped between them. Stop this right now, he hollered. It doesn't matter who started it. Miss Tracy, I'm so disappointed. You were supposed to help the students get more engaged. Oh, gross, I said. We're too young to get engaged. Both of you, go to my office, shouted Mr. Klutz, and think about what you did. Mr. Cooper and Miss Tracy hung their heads and shuffled out of the room. That was weird. I never knew that astronomy could be so interesting. Well, that's the end of chapter four. If I was writing this again, I'd probably end the chapter with the smoke alarm going off and a fire, fire drill starting, but a fire alarm starting. Anyway, I didn't, so that's the way it ends. And tomorrow we're gonna pick up on chapter five, which is titled, Ooh, The Secret Door. But before we go, how about the joke of the day? You ready for the joke of the day? It's not, doesn't come from me. You can't say this is a dad joke, okay? It comes from Jace in Illinois, who says, um, what does a rain cloud wear under her dress? <laughs> what does a rain cloud wear under her dress? Give up? Thunderwear. <laughs> All right, if you don't like that joke, you can put it on Jace from Illinois. All right, let's play out with Josh Saul and Ryan Cunningham's Theme, theme of My Weird School. You ready? Let's do it with me. My Weird School. I'm AJ and my school's a mess. My Weird School. Before a school with fun, I guess. My Weird School where art is cool. And the teacher just changes a rule. Where Mrs. Younger's and Walker's and AJ is crazy. Mrs. Cooney is loony. And the lady is zany. And then there's a principal. His name's Mr. Klutz. And man, oh man, he's that man nuts. Okay, you guys, see you tomorrow. Same time, same place, right here. And uh, read like crazy, wash your hands like crazy. Thank your teacher for National Teachers Day.